Hello everyone, my name is John Boone. I'm the health science librarian here at Harding University. I want to talk to you a little bit about today is a quick introduction to the library, some of the library resources available to you, and some of the databases that are available as well. Very helpful to you. I'd like to begin by taking you to the library website, which is easy to do. Just go up to a search box here and type in library. Harding, edu, and that brings us to the library's main homepage. From here, you can access Power Search, and Power Search is a great way to begin your research. It looks at government docs, books, newspapers, uh, journal articles, um, and also mag books and magazines as well. And it also has research uh, primers and also just various information about topics to get started on research. But now if you wanna look at information that's just held here in the Bracket Library that we physically have, you would look at the library catalog, which is the, on the opposite side here, the library catalog. And you can go in and you can search by title and author, and you will find what we have physically in the collection. And that's all the books and articles, journals that we have, as well as all electronic books, magazines uh, that we have access to. Other sources here, other good links on this page include the About button here. You click About, you can find out what our library hours are and our library policies. Services, you can click and find out information about borrowing and renewing books and about reserving rooms upstairs on the second floor here at the library. Of most important would probably be the research tab. If you click on the drop down menu here, it will give you a list. Uh, we've got, most importantly, we've got research guides and schedule a consultation with a librarian. Now you can schedule a research consultation with me and then we can meet virtually through either Zoom or Google Meets. And to do that, you would click this link. It's going to take you to the, our research consultations. And then you could go right here under my picture and click book now. And that's going to open up. Of course, school hasn't started, so there's nothing scheduled here. If we go to next week, and I'm currently still working on this, but you could go in, for example, and say that you wanted to meet with me next Friday at nine o'clock. And you could click this tab. You'd put in your name, first name, last name, email, and give me a brief description about what you are looking for, what your research is about. We can, I can figure out what's the best way to go about assisting you. So we'll go back to the library main page here. Again, research. Research guides. Research guides, this is listed by subject, and these are guides that were created by librarians for their various departments they work with. And for example, if we click on nursing, these are all dedicated to nursing resources. And basically we've compiled all this information into these research guides to make it easier to find. We've got the, uh, the American Psychological Association or APA Publication Manual um, Research Guide uh, here. And there's now there's a new seventh edition that's come out, but several teachers are using sixth and some are using seventh. Well, how do you know which one you need to use? Uh, well, always, as I have highlighted here, always check with your professor, ask them, and they will tell you which edition that they require. And in here, we've got Purdue Owl as a link. And if you click on Purdue Owl, it's gonna take you to their page, which they're now mainly looking at seventh edition, but it'll say right here, the equivalent resource for the uh, older APA sixth style can be found here. So Purdue Owl has both the sixth and the seventh uh, editions uh, listed on their site and the information is provided. This is a PDF document that if you opened it would have a comparison table between the sixth and seventh edition to see how things have changed from one edition to the next. 
This middle section here is dedicated to resources that are only cover the seventh edition. We have sample papers, we've got uh, checklists, uh, quick reference guides. Um, there's another um, OWL site here at Excelsior University. We've got several different links included in there. And further down, we've got uh, resources dedicated just to the sixth edition, including sample papers and uh, style guides and uh, helpful resources there. Also in the library, we have the publication manual for the sixth edition and for the seventh edition, and they are available for you in the library. We also have the writing center, which is physically housed and located in the library, but it, again, at this time of COVID, they are doing virtual uh, um, writing and uh, consultations. And in order to get in touch with them, you could kind of scroll down to this link here and click on it, and then you would set up an account, and then they would be able to uh, schedule a time for you to meet with one of their assistants, and they could help you in doing uh, proofreading, assistance with APA style, whether it be sixth or seventh editions. Now back to the research guides again. Again, it's research and research guides and then nursing. We have several other guides on here. We've got um, clinical studies, we've got bioethics, there's uh, a guide to with, with human anatomy, which links out to a database called Gale Human Anatomy, which is a 3D anatomy software that we have. Um, we also have search strategies. Uh, a guide here on how to do a literature review, just like what is a literature review, reading and analyzing literature, and then of course talks about the writing, actual writing process of literature reviews. Let's go back, take a look at a, another one in here. Another one that could be very helpful or, uh, to you, so I find it very interesting, is health statistics. And I've got this organized by just about every one of every subject you can imagine. Uh, you can look up autism and look at the statistics we have for that and read that reaches out to the CDC and other sources. Uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We've got statistics on heart disease, on uh, diabetes is also listed in here. It's a complete work in process because there's new uh, sites coming out and I have to go in and check and make sure that they they provide the best or updated information. And so and I try to add the best links possible here. So that's um, just some of the research guides available to you. Let's go back and look at some of the databases that we have. Go back here. If you click anywhere on this logo, it's going to take you back to the library main page. From the library main page, you can click on A to Z database list. And on the A to Z database list here, you can search by subject type. If you go up here and go to the drop down and go to nursing, you'll see that there are 34 databases for nursing. Probably one of the best that you will use most frequently would be uh, Sanal Complete. It's a wonderful database. It has a lot of limiters, which means that it can pick your broad topic and can limit it down and you can get more precise articles, especially if you want, for example, over here, within a five year period, you can put in the date, narrow down the date, you can scroll down and you can type in, you say you want only those that have any author as a nurse. Then you can go over here and say, oh, well, I want the first author as a nurse. You want randomized control trials, limit it to just full text only. All these options are available. That's why I really like Sanal. Now here you have your search boxes at the top here. And you also have, you see a box here that's got a drop down and it says and or are not. Now that's what we call Boolean searches or and what you use those for is like, I'll use a non-medical example. Like say if you wanted to look for an article talking about cats and dogs, what well, you would just type in cats here and then leave this at and and then come down and, and type in dogs. And is the default and it will always stay and unless you change it. 
But if you want to look at uh, cats and dogs, you're going to find articles that specifically talk about cats and dogs. You're not going to find anything that talk about just cats or any articles that talk about just dogs. It's only going to be cats and dogs. If you were to change this to uh, or, then you're going to find articles that talk about cats by themselves or dogs by themselves, but not anything that have both cats and dogs in that article. And if you put another way to look at it using not would be if you wanted to look at dogs, but not German Shepherds. So then you would find all articles that talk about dogs, but not any that have German Shepherds included in those articles. So it kind of helps you break up your searches a little bit there. But I'm gonna use and here and let's look up autism. Autism and I'm gonna leave and there and speech. Speech delay. Do this search here. So I didn't limit use any of the limiters, but that's okay because this is just a practice search. And when you're searching through here, you're gonna find articles that will have PDF listed below it. Those are great. You just click this link and it'll open up to a PDF which you can immediately print or you can download or save it to your desktop. Others will say retrieve full text. And that's just as great because if you click retrieve full text, it will take you to, uh, it's gonna search other uh, databases. This it pulls from Science Direct and here you have a link to download the full text. So let's go back to where we were looking here, but then you're gonna find times when you're scrolling through that you're gonna come across an article that's like, wow, this would be a great article. I'd like to get this one. But you see there's no retrieve full text or PDF here. So just go ahead and click, um, click on the title. And then what's gonna happen is you'll see a red button over here that says request through interlibrary loan. And if you click this, and you've logged into Pipeline, you'll get a screen that's already populated for you here. And in this screen, you will be able to see that all the information about the article is already populated. All you have to do is scroll down, select your status, whether it be distant, undergrad, graduate. And once you've selected that, then you, you can select your department. And then you would hit submit request. And then you will receive an email saying that you've requested this article. And then within about 48 hours, you'll receive another email which contains a link that you can click and go to. And you'll have options to look at the article for five times, or you can um, have 30 days to download it. I would just go ahead, as soon as you get the email, go to that site, download the article, save it to your desktop. That way you've got it. In case you you request it, then you forgot that you requested, which is easy to do with all the stuff that goes on during a semester, and then then you lose it. So this is the best way to go about doing that. Go ahead and save it immediately. Save early, save often. But that's an example of how you can do a search, and if you find one that we don't have, we can get it for you. There's no uh worries with that we can get it for you other databases just real quickly uh, cochrane library that's very good for clinical studies dynamed it's more of a point of care you'll have uh, care plans and, and patient health um, plans are in there as well patient education um, the same goes with nursing reference center plus is excellent for that you'll have nursing care plans as it says here and you also have patient education. Um, another one is a really good database that's right up there with Sonal as far as how good it is, is PubMed. Um, that, and all these databases will search in a similar fashion. There might be a few little differences, some that, doesn't, that will not have as many limiters as Sonal, but they all search using the same search box, similar search boxes, and uh, in a similar fashion. So don't be intimidated by that. 
Um, I guess that's about it for today. Uh, I hope that you have a wonderful semester. Be safe. Uh, if I can help you in any way, please uh, contact me uh, through email. You can call my office. You can um, use the Book Me Now app. And I work over at the library every Monday night from 7 to 11. So you could come by and we could set up a, a meeting at that time as well. Um, but otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day and a great semester.